In this video, I'm going to show you how you can set up HubSpot for your real estate business. So if you're looking for a CRM system for your real estate business, this video is for you. If you're not familiar with HubSpot, HubSpot is not only a great CRM, but it's also great for marketing automation and you can even run your website on it and your service as well. And the good thing is with a just recently released feature that HubSpot has. It makes it really easy now to get started. Let's dive right in. So when we go to HubSpot and we go to settings here at the top, by the way, if you're not using HubSpot yet, I'll leave a link in the description where you can fill out a form. I'll send you a guide on how you need to set up HubSpot. Also, if you need any help getting a new HubSpot license, I be more than happy to help you with that as well. And I can also waive the onboarding fee for you as well. So let's get into it. Um, when we go to the settings here, we have something uh, under data management called object library. You can see that it's new. So when we go here, we can see that we have a couple of options. So you can already see appointments, listings, courses, companies, etc. But actually it gets more interesting than this. If we go to the bottom right here, it says that it has some data templates that are industry specific. And when we have a look at these, look at that. We have one specifically for real estate. Isn't that amazing? So a set of uh, data model recommendations for real estate agencies, property management firms, and a range of other organizations that interact with real estate listings. And when we click it, we click next. We can actually see what's all included. And you can select what you want in here. And uh, also if there's anything that you wouldn't want to include, you can just check those off. So first of all, we have a listings object. So this is for all the properties uh, or units to be bought, sold or rented. Then you can also see that there's an association label that can be created as well. So you can easily mark the listing agent for a certain property. Then for context, you see that a couple of uh, properties will be created. The first one being role, which is a drop-down select between buyer, renter, commercial and investor. And then we also have a buyer category, which has a couple of checkboxes where you can say this is a first home buyer, an owner, owner occupier, a downsizer or an investment property contact. Again, we have association, association labels here as well, so you can mark the listing agent for a certain contact. Then for deals, uh, you see that a couple of pipelines are included here, but you can also choose a specific one. So for example, if you don't do rentals, you can just check that one off and you will only get the buyer and seller pipeline. You can see that it already has all of the stages in there. So we have a new lead, viewing, security deposit paid, closed one, closed lost. And then for a seller pipeline, for example, contacting, engaging, qualified under contract. We listed it in the MLS. An offer has been made, an offer has been accepted, uh, active closing, closing scheduled, and then eventually your closed one, closed lost. Last but not least, uh, whenever you get customer questions or you have specific support requests. We also have a pipeline for that. It's called the maintenance pipeline. And here you can uh, track the different stages like a ticket has just been opened. It's a new one. Work has been scheduled, work has been completed, and eventually the ticket has been closed. So we'll click next here. We'll include everything that we saw just now. So it's asking me to confirm all of these changes. I'm gonna confirm these. And now you can see I have successfully applied the template real estate business. So we click on done and if everything is all right here and we go to deals, for example, we should have our different pipelines here. So here we can already see we have a buyer pipeline, seller pipeline. So when we go to the seller pipeline, have it in this view here, um, you can see all of the different stages here. I can create a deal. Let's call this 200 Madison F. Um, new lead, close dates, deal type, let's say it's new business. Let's link this to a random contact here. And then we're gonna create this deal. Um, okay, so this is where the deals are, but something else that we have now is the listings as well. Let's first have a look at this uh, object itself. So when we go back to deals here, at the top, uh, we get different options and here we can go to listings. Now here we can create a new listing. So for example, um, let's call this one 200 Madison Ave as well. Um, 
the name will actually be the same as the address. You can see that you can like put in all of the information that you need for a specific listing. I'm not going to do all of them. So let's say this is a townhouse. Um, you can add the number of bedrooms and bathrooms. So let's say it's a 3-3. Three, three. Um, the price would be 26 million. Um, square footage, lot size, year belt. You can put all of these things in. You can create a listing. And then we can also link this listing to specific contacts, specific deals. Um, so let's say we want to add the listing agent here. We're going to just pick a random person in this case. Okay, we have um, Craig Scott here. And now we can also see that we can change the association label and we can mark Craig as the listing agent for this specific property. Now, that also means that once you have all of these properties in here, you can also look at a, at a contact and then see all of the listings that are included. So right here, we can see the listings. We can also change this to have this more at the top. So that, that's also the nice thing about HubSpot. You have a lot of flexibility in setting up this system to work exactly for you. We already have like a system where we can manage our listings now. We can easily add contacts um, to this listing. Right now we are just uh, marking the listing agency. But for example, if you have a late stage potential buyer for uh, the specific listing, you could also add that contact here as well. And we could create a new association label um, to mark that buyer. So for example, if we would look at the association labels, here we go to create and configure label limits. We just want a single label, um, let's call it potential buyer. Then we want to be able to have many contacts can have a label potential buyer and many listings can have a label potential buyer. So we have no limits in these directions. And now when we go back to our listings, the one thing that's um, still a little bit annoying, I hope that HubSpot will change this, is that these new objects don't show up in the CRM menu. So you first, for example, have to go to contacts and then you can go to listings. Obviously you can bookmark this page and then you will have easy access to it as well. So here we have our listing pipeline. Um, now when we go to our listing on 200 Madison Ave, we can add a new contact, we can save this, and then we can mark this contact as our potential buyer, for example. So this way we can always easily see uh, what the relationship is between these contacts and the listing that we have. This also really comes in handy once you start setting up automations. And for example, you want to send an email to all of the potential buyers from a certain listing, you can easily create a list of those people, set up your email campaign, send that out, and this will make it really easy to manage all of these email campaigns and make sure that they end up with the right people. There are a bunch more things that we can do in HubSpot. If you're in real estate and you're looking at this video, you're watching this video, please leave a comment and let me know what you would like to see next, because I would like to create some additional videos specifically for real estate. So any questions you might have, you can just drop them in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.